Hey y'all and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Amber and I love all things handbag related with a little bit of emphasis on the brand Vera Bradley. I also do some content related to concealed carry and how that works with all my beautiful bags that I love. So if any of that sounds good to you, then stick around and let's hang out. So for today's video, I thought I would do something a little bit different and I'm going to make this into another tag video. So before I even get into it, I want to go ahead and tag all of the fabulous, awesome other ladies that do this same kind of content. So Potato Peach, um, Vera is my bag, Vera Bradley bag of the day, Warthog Princess, the Glam P, um, who else? I can't think of everybody, but I will tag you in the description box down below. So no worries. I'm getting everybody. <laughs> so what is this video? This is going to be the six bags that I think Vera Bradley should bring back today. It's going to be eight total items because two of them are bonuses. I actually started out with five. It was going to be five bag styles that I thought Vera Bradley should bring back, but I actually came up with six that I really wanted to mention. And then there were more, there were like 12 that I came up with. Okay. Let's be for real. <laughs> there were like 12 and I was like, no, that's too many. Let's narrow it down some. So then I was like, let's get to five. Let's do your top five. And then I was like, ah, oh, but you know, really there's a couple more. And then it turned into six and then it was six with two bonus items because one is an accessory piece that I simply can't leave out when it comes to this. And the other is a bag style that I really do think they should bring back, but I can't find mine. So it's going to be a bonus item and I'm just going to throw the picture of it up here. So let's get started with my first bonus item. And that is the accessory piece that I think Vera Bradley should bring back immediately. This is one of my all-time favorite items that Vera Bradley has ever had, ever introduced, ever made, ever produced, ever came up with. And they should bring it back immediately because I still hold a grudge against them for getting rid of it to begin with. And it is the ever-fabulous Gen Zip ID. Y'all, this is the greatest little compact wallet ever made particularly in the unquilted version. This little item stays just as slim as a zip ID, but can hold, I'm going to venture to say like three times the amount a zip ID can hold. If you've been living under a rock and you don't know what I'm talking about, the Gen Zip ID is essentially a regular zip ID. So you have your zip section with the little um, divider right there. So your ID goes right here. So it's a zip ID that has had an additional pocket sewn onto it. This little pocket has a snap flap and it's just a simple pocket. But when this item is unquilted, again, it stays super thin, but it will really bulk out if you need it to. It can hold an absolute ton, but it's so simple. It also comes with a little ring on it. This one is not what comes with it. I changed this one out a long time ago, but it comes with a key ring on it so you can attach a wristlet strap, your keys, a lanyard, whatever you want to put onto it. And these items are just fantastic. This is probably my all-time favorite favorite wallet, but since they've retired it, that little Amazon card case I keep showing y'all over and over and over is slowly making its way up to my favorite because Vera Bradley needs to bring back the Gen Zip ID. If I did not mention it, this pattern is, what is this pattern? Well, I can't remember the name of this pattern. I had it in my mind before I started this video and now as always, I have had a complete brain fart and lost it. So I will put the name of this pattern on the screen right below here. But bonus item number one is the Gen Zip ID. 
They need to bring it back immediately. For bonus item number two, I'm going to scoot off to the side a little bit so that I can pop in a picture of the saddlebag, the saddle crossbody. I cannot find any of mine, so I think that they are all in storage at my mom's house, honestly. But I need to take them out because as I was picking the different bags I wanted to choose for this particular video, I really started to remember how much I love this bag style. It is a larger crossbody style. I wouldn't say that it's enormous, but it's a medium large sized bag. It has great organization. It has a magnetic flap on the front of it. It has two slip pockets directly under that flap. And then on the inside, you have your traditional two slip, one zip pocket. But it has a great silhouette to it. It has a fabulous adjustable strap. It came in a lot of really cute colors and patterns back in the day. And I think they should really bring it back. So this is my bonus item number two, the saddle crossbody. So now let's get into my top six bag styles that Vera Bradley should bring back. So number six, you may see me refer to some notes over here because while I do have these in a particular order, you know, it could kind of one could outrank the other on any given day and truth be told on any given day there may be a different bag style that I might slide in here depending on my mood and what I'm looking for but as of today as of the last few days this is what I've picked so number six is a bag style that I initially hated and I can tell you all a really quick story about this when I was in not when I was in, I'm a lunatic. When my son was in sixth grade, he was getting ready to start sixth grade. And you know how school will do the uh, welcome back orientation before school actually starts. So he was going into middle school here and we went to the orientation to meet his teachers, get a layout of the school since he was going from elementary school to the middle school. It was bigger, it was different, it was new. He wanted a little bit of an idea of where he would be going and all of that. So we went to the orientation and we had seen a few of his teachers. And as we were walking around, my eyeball spots Vera Bradley coming down the hall toward me, right? And this, this school was really crowded. There were people everywhere, you know, taking their kids around. But I, you know, with my, my, eagle-eyed vision at the time <laughs> I spot a Vera Bradley bag not a bag though I just see the strap on this lady's shoulder and I could tell she had some sort of bag in the heather pattern and I was like "Ooh, what's she carrying I love me some you know some Vera Bradley bags I like the pattern heather one of my all-time favorites love that print it's so bright and pretty and fun so I'm like, what bag style is she carrying? Oh, I can't wait until I get up here closer and I can see because I was going this way and she was going this way. So we were going to cross paths and I was going to get to see what bag she was carrying. So we get closer and closer and closer and I finally get to where I can see what she's carrying. And it's the tote, not the beer tote, not the small beer tote, just the tote. And at that time, I was like, are you kidding me? Of all the bag styles, she's carrying this dumbass tote. <laughs> that's not a real bag style. That's just a stupid hole. That's not, it doesn't even zip up. It doesn't, it's just a tote. That's so dumb. She should have got a better bag. And then a couple of years ago, the paper store put the new, I think it was Felicity Paisley or, yeah, I think it was Felicity Paisley a couple of years ago had just come out and the paper store put the tote bag in Felicity Paisley on sale for half off at $30 and I couldn't pass up the deal and I had no idea what I was going to do with that tote but I ordered it. I ordered it and I ended up loving it because it is just a hole and that started a whole chain of events where not only did I get the Felicity Paisley tote I bought like six more of them. So my pick for number six 
the sixth bag Beer Bradley should bring back is the tote. The regular little tote bag. This one is in Wildflower Paisley. If you're unfamiliar with the tote, it has a magnetic snap at the top. The newer version has a magnetic snap at the top. The older versions had the little toggle closure. You had the little toggle here with the loop that would come over and hook onto that toggle. You have two shoulder straps. So that's about the drop on me. There are no pockets on the front, no pockets on the back. The newer version does have a little teeny tiny hidden zip pocket right here down the side. So this is super convenient if you want to throw your phone in there, your keys, whatever it is you want to put in that little hidden pocket. And then on the inside, oops, I still have junk in here. <laughs> we'll just ignore that. So on the inside, along the back, you get one, two, three slip pockets. And then along the front of the bag, you get another slip pocket along with two little pen slips right there. This bag has been awesome as just a tote. This is a little bigger than the small beer tote, but smaller than the large beer tote. So it kind of fills that gap. It has a decent size base on it. We use these, my family and I use these when we go to the public library and check out books. I've used them at the grocery store. I have used them at the farmer's market. I have used them just to throw crap in my car. The tote bag is one of the most useful bags Vera Bradley has ever come out with. It was reasonably priced. It wasn't extortionate. And I think that's because it didn't have all the bells and whistles. It didn't have all the outside pockets. It didn't have a zip closure. But those things are what make this bag so great. It is just a big old hole for you to chuck all your stuff in and go. This is a fabulous bag style that Vera Bradley needs to bring back immediately. Number six, the tote bag. All right, number five. Number five is a bag style that was not out for a very long time. It actually came out in the leather bags that Vera Bradley made for a little bit. It was a bag style that initially when I saw it, I liked it, but I didn't know how well I would like it until I got one. After I got one, I ended up with four of them. That's how much I liked it. So for this particular style, I don't necessarily think that it would need to come back out in leather. I absolutely think this would be a fabulous bag in the performance twill material. I think it could work in the cotton bags as well, though I really dislike the recycled cotton. So, yeah, I would prefer it in the performance twill or even the leather if they decided to bring it back. I really think that some of Vera Bradley's leathers were highly, highly underrated. They are soft and supple and they're gorgeous leather bags. But regardless, as I said, I do think this style would make a fabulous performance twill bag. So if by any chance anyone from the Vera Bradley creative team ever watched this video, give it a try. I think it would be fabulous. So number five, my number five pick is the Kara Convertible Crossbody. Now, why do I love this bag so much? First of all, 
this one is in a pattern called Camo Floral Nude. So it has that kind of butterscotch tan background, that base to it. And then it's got these gorgeous pink and white florals. There's a little bit of like a greenish gray in there. But it's these pinks and these whites that I think go so well on this this tan nude colored background. This pattern's gorgeous. But the bag style itself, let's take a look at it in case you're unfamiliar. So first and foremost, we have feet on the bottom. This bag will sit on its own. So the feet, I don't know. They're, they're nice to have for your own peace of mind. But again, this is a soft leather. So if this wasn't packed completely full, it could potentially sag a bit. So the feet to me are not a big deal. But I know a lot of people do like that. On the back of this bag, there is a magnetic closure. You can see the magnet there. This pocket goes from this side to this side all the way to the bottom. A huge, huge back pocket. Perfect to put your cell phone in. On the front, before we ever get under this flap, there's a zip pocket right here along the side. Zipper is perfectly smooth, no issues. This pocket goes from here to here and all the way to here. It's about two-thirds of the way across this bag. For anyone curious, my gun, my handgun, does fit in this zip pocket. So for concealed carry purposes, this is a fabulous, fabulous bag. Once I open the flap, I do have this bag stuffed, so bear with me. But the inside of this bag is your traditional two slip pockets. I don't want to pull all this out, y'all, because it is a pain to get it back in there. <laughs> but you have your traditional two slip pockets on the front. And then on the back, you have your zip pocket. So it has a very, very traditional interior. But Another one of the reasons that this bag style is so fabulous, it has a magnetic closure. No issue, this flap always finds its mark. And you have your little D-rings here. You can see that this doesn't go anywhere. So one of the reasons that this bag was so awesome was because this strap had two separate pieces. You can attach the shorter strap. Let's just go with the middle setting. So you can attach the shorter one. And this leather style does have that little tab to hold the end of your strap down, which is another fabulous feature. So you attach the shorter strap. You get a shoulder bag. A gorgeous leather shoulder bag with a fantastic drop and even this shorter shoulder strap has adjustments you have three different settings you can choose from so you can make it shorter or longer depending on your preference or if you don't want a shoulder bag and you want a crossbody or a longer shoulder bag you have another strap if you attach this one and again, let's just go with, this side has six different settings to it. So let's go with the third one. Super easy to change in and out, as you can see. I actually forgot there are two of these little leather tabs that you can slide around depending on how long or short you want to set this so that you can actually keep this strap from dangling around at any length. So longer crossbody. Perfect, 
perfect size little crossbody bag fits everything that you need it's got a great depth on it it's just a perfect size I think it looks super classy I think the way this is designed is extremely functional I love that you get two different strap options the buckle strap has never been my favorite because it's extremely hard to get a buckle adjustment that will work as a shoulder bag or a crossbody bag. Sometimes I want one, sometimes I want the other. And to get a crossbody bag, your strap has to be long enough to do that, right? So if it's long enough to be a crossbody bag and then you try to shorten it to the length of a shoulder bag, you always end up with so much strap excess hanging down that it doesn't work. So when Vera Bradley made this design, and then gave you the buckle adjustment with the two different straps that would completely come off of the bag to give you the option to how you wanted to wear it. They made this bag a complete game changer for me personally. That's why I ended up with four of these. I love the size. I love the organization. I love that this bag has a front pocket that's almost hidden to where the front of the bag just looks clean and sleek without any interference. I love this giant back pocket. There's so much you can fit in here and it's so user friendly with that magnet but still giving you some security. I love the interior space. It's just a fabulous, fabulous bag and I can see this working so well in Performance 12 that I would love, love to see them come out with this exact design and performance twill. Maybe replace the magnet right here with just or the snap with just another magnet but either way I would probably buy four more of them. So my number five pick is the Kara convertible crossbody. All right my number four pick. Number four for me is very reminiscent of another style that Vera Bradley has made, but it's a little different. I prefer this one because the shape of it lends itself better to storage in the way that I pack and carry my bags, but it's such a timeless classic silhouette that I would love to see them bring this bag style back. And the same as with the Kara Convertible Crossbody, where that bag was in leather. This bag is also in a different fabrication. But I would love to see them bring this bag back again in either cotton or performance twill. I am, a, I'm, I am partial to the performance twill material, so I would love to see them bring this back in performance twill because, again, I think that would make a fabulous bag but my number four pick is the Marlowe satchel now the bag that this is very reminiscent of to me is the 100 handbag let me open this and fill it out a little bit better so you can see But this is a bag style that has that same kind of classic satchel silhouette. But I prefer this style over the 100 handbag style because the 100 handbag style is very, very rectangular. It has very sharp angles to it. And when you go to store that bag... Unless you want to keep it stuffed, if you try to bend it or fold it flat, you will never be able to get those creases back out. You will never, I, ca I can't say never, but it's going to be extremely difficult to get those creases back out. It's going to be extremely difficult to keep that bag from collapsing in on itself. If you have watched any of Elise's videos from Vera Bradley Bag of the Day on the 100 handbags that she has, she talks in depth about how difficult it is to store those bags to make them keep their shape or how difficult it is once you have ordered one and received it through the mail how 
how much effort and how much work she has to put into giving that bag its shape back. And I don't get me wrong, I do like that bag style a lot. I have several of them. And I do think they're a very classic satchel silhouette. I think they're very feminine looking. But I prefer the Marlow satchel. So this is actually the Preppy Polly Marlow satchel in black. So I don't necessarily think that I would want it back in this material, even though I like this material just fine. But I would love to see this silhouette where it's kind of the same silhouette as the 100 handbag, but it's a little bit softer. So I would love to see them make this softer silhouette in the performance twill or the cotton. This bag style and silhouette really lends itself well to a really, really feminine look. I think it looks great as a shoulder bag, a long shoulder bag, even as a crossbody or just a handheld crook of the arm. However you want to do it, this is truly just a classic silhouette that I think looks great on everybody. So this one in particular has the two top handles that you can grab onto or, like I said, carry over the crook of your arm. It has a hidden zip pocket right here. And it does come with an adjustable, removable, long shoulder crossbody strap. The back has no pockets. It is just a clean silhouette. Then on the inside, you have your very classic two slip pockets, one zip pocket. But you can see, just by me opening this up, that visibility into this bag style is fabulous. You have a ton of room in there. It's easy to get to everything. And that's another one of the gripes that I kind of have with the 100 handbag. Where it is so angular and where it's just as wide across the top as it is across the bottom. To get into those slip pockets and that zip pocket that are on the inside, it's really difficult. Especially if the bag is packed and you're trying to maneuver your hand in and over other things to get to those pockets it's kind of a pain whereas this silhouette mine's been folded for a while so I'm sure it's hard to see but where this silhouette is a bit wider at the bottom and just a bit you know a bit narrower at the top and you have all this access and this visibility as opposed to just one single zip across the top where this zipper comes down the sides a bit, it gives you so much more visibility. And it makes all these interior pockets so much more accessible. It just makes your items on the inside so much more accessible. This, um, this bag style fits a lot more than the 100 handbag does. But it's just, I just love this silhouette. I think it's so ladylike and so... I guess prim and proper almost. I just love it. It is your quintessential silhouette for a satchel. So my number four pick is the Marlowe satchel. I also forgot to mention on this one that you get a double zip across the top, which is just another fabulous feature that I love about this bag. So depending on what you need to get to, what you're doing, you can just unzip the one side, get in there, or you can push both zips to one side if that works better for you. However you want to do it, a double zipper across a larger size bag like this is just a great feature to have. So again, my number four pick is the Marlowe Satchel. Vera Bradley should bring it back immediately. All right, we're getting into my top three picks for me personally. And you'll probably see a little bit of a theme in these next few bags. So number three. Number three is a bag style that was out for a very, very limited amount of time. It only came out in, I want to say, 
three or maybe four patterns and one solid color. It's a bag style that is a play on another bag style that I don't actually care for. But this one, once I received my first one and I fell in love with it, I had to have more. That's how much I loved this style. And I ended up with... I have three of the patterns. Maybe it only came out in three patterns. I want to say four, but it may have only been three. I might have all of the patterns at this point. But it also came out in black microfiber, and I don't have that one yet. Anyway, this is a bag style that, to me, is one of the best they've ever done. So my pick for number three... is the Glenna Hobo. This is my Glenna Hobo in Holland Garden. So, why do I love this bag style so much? I don't care for the Glenna Satchel. I've talked about this a few times, but the Glenna Satchel doesn't work for me for a few different reasons. The top zip closure to the main interior is very recessed. It's not as recessed now as it used to be. Back in the day, the top zip closure used to have like a three inch recess and that was so much wasted space. But the current versions for me, they're very billowy and the, when I put my items into that bag, it just tends to sink and spread out at the bottom and nothing stays where I put it. And it's just a very large shoulder bag for me. And I've never been able to make it work for me. The Glenna Hobo, however, is a fabulous, fabulous medium-sized handbag. And I did make a modification to this to make it work better for me. So the Glenna Hobo, on the front, you have one zip pocket that's hidden in this seam right here. So you have a vertical zip pocket that goes right here. It's almost the entire front panel of this bag. You have those traditional little pull ties on the sides of the bag, but I don't use them. I just leave them out and they just kind of hang there. It doesn't bother me at all. But you can choose to use those if Perhaps this is a bit large for you and you want to make it smaller, you can pull those in and you can give this bag a completely different look. You can cinch those up and you can make this look more like that Glenna Satchel silhouette where it's not as wide east-west and it's a little bit more squared off overall with the little puffy bits at the bottom. Again, I don't really do that because I want all that space in there. But it's a cute feature to have if you want it because it completely changes the shape of the bag. On the back, you have this enormous magnetic pocket. This pocket will fit an absolute ton. When you open the bag up and get to the main interior, <clears throat> like with most other bags, you have your traditional two slip pockets, one zip pocket. But once you open this bag up, it shows you one of the reasons I love it so much. Look at that visibility. This zip, even though it's not my favorite, that the zipper hangs off a bit on the end. I just tuck that in because that allows you, regardless, to have all this visibility into this bag. This is a fabulous medium size, meaning you can get all of your essentials in here and more. 
it's got a great depth on it. So you can see there, depending on how much you stuff it, depending on how much it puffs out, you could have like five or six inches on your depth there. But I think it's actually meant to be about three and a half ish, give or take. But it holds an absolute ton. It'll hold more than you think that it will. You have all this fabulous visibility. And then this is a bag style again that comes with a shoulder strap and a crossbody strap. Now, when you actually get this bag, the shoulder strap is attached. It's not meant to come off. And that is what I changed about this bag. I cut those original rings off and I put my own on here so that I could take this strap off because the adjustable strap for me, I can shorten this to its shortest length and I can connect it. And this length works perfectly fine for me personally as a shoulder bag. It is a bit longer than, you know, a shoulder bag that might sit a bit higher up. But I, I like this length. It's at a length that works for me where I can just rest my arm on the top of the bag and it works perfectly. Now, if I didn't take those D-rings off, this strap would just kind of be flopping around right here or shoved up against my body. So that is why I chose to change the D-rings. That way, if I want to put the shoulder strap back on, I can. And if I don't want it there, then it doesn't have to be there. But I can put it back on at any time because I didn't cut the strap and I didn't damage it. So for all of those reasons, this is my number three pick, the Glenna Hobo. I would absolutely love to see Vera Bradley bring back this bag. Again, I wouldn't care if it was in the cotton, the performance twill. Hell, I'd probably even take it in the reactive material and try it. That's how much I absolutely love this bag style. But I would hope they would make the modification for us on the next go around if they brought if they decided to bring it back. So that they would put the O-rings on here with the quick release so we could decide if we wanted to keep the shoulder strap on all the time or take it off. So number three, the Glenna Hobo. All right, number two. Number two was probably the first bag style of Vera Bradley's that I truly, truly fell in love with. I had other bags before this style. I had several other bags before I found this style. And I liked them a lot. Um, but there was always something about them that I really wanted to change but couldn't. This bag style came along and I bought my first one. And I ended up at one point with 11 of these bags. I don't have that now. At this point, I think I have four or five of them left because I did get rid of a few in patterns that I just wasn't as crazy about. But I bought that many of them back in the day because I loved the style so much. To me, this was almost the perfect mid-sized everyday crossbody bag. And at the time, all I would wear was a crossbody bag. I didn't care about a shoulder bag. I didn't care about a tote. I didn't care about any of that. All I would carry was a crossbody bag. But I needed one that wasn't an itty bitty teeny tiny thing. And I had tried the hipsters and I had a few of those at the time. But I had outgrown those. I needed to carry a little more. And I ran onto this style and I just fell in love. It was perfect. It had a good amount of organization. It was a good size. The strap was comfortable. It was easy to adjust. It was plenty long enough. And so I fell in love. 
and I would love to see them bring back this exact style. They have brought what I would consider maybe a variation or two, but not this exact style. So my number two pick is the Carry All Crossbody. And this is one of mine. This is in Blue Bayou. The Carry All Crossbody to me is just one of the most perfect mid-sized crossbody bags that Vera Bradley has ever made. You still got a little bit of that trim right here on the front, but it was just, it's not an overwhelming bag, but it's got a really good size base on it. It'll fit a ton and the organization is really, really good. So on the front, you have one slip pocket here and one slip pocket here. So this is my phone case. These slip pockets are a perfect size for your cell phone. Even today, they still fit perfectly. On the back of the bag, you had this really large size zip pocket that went all the way across the bag. The strap on this was extremely easy to adjust. It's not removable, but it is adjustable. So you can make it shoulder length or you can extend it out and make it crossbody length. It has this really nice little tiny bit of a scoop across the top zip here that gives it just a little bit more of a feminine silhouette than if the zip went straight across. Because you've got to think, especially if you're wearing this as a crossbody bag, that little tiny bit of a scoop right there just helps the bag kind of nestle into your hip or your side there just a little bit more comfortably than if the zipper was straight. And I also think that it can give your body a little bit more of a feminine shape because of that scoop. Because where it allows the bag to just kind of mold into you, it doesn't cut your body off so harshly. And it just, it gives you that little curve. I don't know. I may be just talking out my ass at this point. But I hope at least somebody understands what I'm saying. So when you get inside the bag, all you have in here is two slip pockets. You don't actually have, there you go, you can see them now. You get the two slip pockets. You don't actually have the zip pocket on the back. But to be honest with you, I've never missed it in this bag. I've never missed that zip pocket across the back because... This bag is large enough and has a large enough capacity that I have always been able to fit pretty much any pouch or organizational piece that I wanted inside here. So even though it doesn't have that internal zip pocket, I have plenty of zippers going on inside here with my own pouches. So again, you can see that base size is really, really quite large. But you can see from the side of the bag that you get that triangular shape. So it's got a really, really great capacity to it. But again, when you wear it up against your body, where it's larger at the bottom and kind of tapers at the top, it just lays into your body and molds so well. So... It has great capacity. I love the organization, the external pockets. The strap is extremely comfortable, easy to adjust to a shoulder or crossbody length, whatever you want. It has, it just has so many things going in its favor that I love this bag style. And I would love to see them bring it back. It's almost a perfect mix of an east-west and a north-south style, whereas you get the width, but you also get the height. So depending on which style you prefer, I'm typically an east-west silhouette kind of person. 
But if you're a north-south silhouette kind of person, this is still a fabulous bag for you because this still has that height plus the width. So for all of the reasons I've already mentioned and probably even more that I've forgotten, my number two pick is the carry-all crossbody. Mira Bradley needs to bring this one back like yesterday. All right, guys, we made it to my number one pick. I have talked about this bag style before. So any of y'all that have watched quite a few of my videos, pause this video for a second and make your guess. What do you think my number one bag silhouette that Vera Bradley should bring back immediately is? Let me know in the comments below. All right, so number one. Number one for me is a bag style that, again, it came out in a few patterns. It came out in probably maybe eight different pattern choices and maybe a couple of solids. Yeah, I want to say around, something around that. I personally have three of them. This bag was part of the Hadley collection, if that gives you any idea of where I'm going. <laughs> but it's just a bag style that overall has worked phenomenally well for me and my lifestyle. Particularly if you take into account the concealed carry portion of my life when I choose to do that. My number one pick is the Hadley On The Go Satchel. So this one is in Lilac Medallion. Now why do I like this bag style so much? Well, typically I like a strap that is detachable. So it, that, because they usually have the little lobster clasp that will turn so your strap doesn't get tangled, but I've never had a tangle issue with these straps. So they're not detachable, but they are adjustable. So you can adjust it shorter for a shoulder bag, or again, you can let it all the way out to make a crossbody. I absolutely adore these little grab handles right here, because when the bag is full, you can grab this so easy, like when you're getting out of your car or you're putting your bag back in your car or maybe you're, you know, just crossing the street or whatever it is, you can totally do a little crook of the arm or just a little handheld moment. So it gives you almost that little satchel feel as well. I love the versatility of that. As far as the concealed carry part goes, that's all because of these outside pockets. You get not just one, but two of these vertical outside pockets. I, I personally carry my handbags on my right side. So both of these zip pockets point in the direction that I personally need. My handgun fits in both of these pockets with no issue, so I can choose whether I want it on the outside of my bag or whether I want it on the inside of my bag closer to my body. So I like that option. I like that choice. These front zip pockets go to about right here. They fit, as I said, they fit my handgun with no issue. Here is my phone case again. Fits that with ease horizontally or vertically. These are really, really good size pockets on the outside of this bag. Not only do you get those zip pockets on the outside, you also get a really decently sized slip pocket on both ends of the bag. So the top of the slip pocket is a little bit more narrow than the bottom. You can see how it widens out there at the bottom. 
but these slip pockets on the sides will hold an absolute ton. I've never tried to put a water bottle in them, but let me just go grab one and we'll see. Okay, so I just grabbed a standard 16.9 ounce bottle of water. That fits in there no problem at all. And it's down in there like this sucker wouldn't fall out unless your bag was all the way upside down. So just another reason that I love this bag. <clears throat> if you want to fit a water bottle in those outside pockets, you can absolutely do it. The inside, this one is no different than any other bag. Your traditional two slip, one zip. But this bag style did come out at the time when Beer Bradley was doing the whole charger pocket. So you had the grommet that fed into this front zip pocket. And then you had that additional little pocket that was inside this one. Let me see if I can show you that a little better. Can you see the pocket inside the pocket there? So I guess it would give you a little bit of extra organization. I never actually used those pockets for their intended purpose. But just like the Glenna Hobo, where this bag is wider at the top and more narrow at the bottom, it gives you that really, really wide opening to see and be able to get to everything that's in your bag. Plus, this bag being part of the Hadley line, it has that micro quilting. It's probably hard to see through this pattern, but you can see the smaller stitching and the smaller quilts on there. And what that does is it gives this bag a really soft feel. The bottom of this bag, or this style, is still flexible. You can still bend it and smush it. But it's got enough, I don't want to say padding or anything like that. But it's got enough resistance on the bottom that it doesn't just sag. It... It doesn't tend to sag at all. It keeps its structure really nicely, even though it is a softer, more pliable bag. And again, that bottom, you can see the depth on it. It's a really, really, really large depth, especially for a bag that can be used crossbody. So this bag will hold an absolute ton. You can fill it up as much as you want. Or you can carry as little as you want. It will hold your essentials plus tons of extra items. I've thrown a little cardigan sweater in this one before. So they will hold pretty much anything you want them to hold. But this is just a fabulous, fabulous bag. And I would love to see Vera Bradley bring it back again. I would love it. So this is my number one pick for bag styles that Vera Bradley really, really needs to bring back. The Hadley on the go satchel. So that's it, y'all. That is my top six plus two bonus items that I would love to see Vera Bradley bring back. I'm sure that y'all noticed <clears throat> the majority of my picks were more mid-sized, crossbody, adjustable type bags. I like the versatility. I like the option to carry what I want to carry without having to cut down too much. Don't get me wrong. I like smaller bags. Just I like them too. They have their place. But my preference in general is a mid to larger mid-sized crossbody or shoulder bag that has the versatility to go either way I want. And so, yeah, I would love to see them bring back more styles that fit that category. Because 
in my opinion, there aren't many right now. There's the bucket crossbody, which I do like that one quite a bit. There's the multi-strap shoulder bag, which you all know I love. I've raved about it quite a bit. There's, what else is there? The on the go, do they still have the on the go? I can't even remember. There's, there's a few bags I've brought out in the solid, unquilted, recycled cotton, but to me, in my mind, that's not quintessential Vera Bradley. Quintessential Vera Bradley is quilted and it has a pattern to it and it's fun and kind of quirky and whimsical and it's not just plain, flat, unquilted colors. Don't get me wrong, I do like a couple of those styles and I do prefer the way that the recycled cotton feels on the unquilted bags because it has a little bit of a puffier feel to it so it makes that material feel softer as opposed to the quilted versions which are much thinner and feel flimsier and I'm getting off on a completely different tangent <laughs> so anyway those were the six plus two bonus bags that I really wish Vera Bradley would bring back these are all in my favorite category and I really wish they had more style options in that particular mid-range category because I feel like we've lost a lot of them. We've lost a lot of them and that's my favorite category. So they're really slacking. They need to get on it. Anyway, I'm done rambling. I have talked a ton for this video. Again, I'm going to tag a ton of people down below. I hope that you guys find the time to do this video with me. I think it would be really fun to see what you all pick. I'd be extremely interested in seeing all of the bags that you all would like to see Vera Bradley bring back, whether it's two styles, three styles, or 20 styles. Pick your number and tell me what you'd like to see come back. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed this. I hope you found it entertaining. Maybe you saw something you hadn't seen before. Or maybe you learned a little bit about a bag you'd been interested in but hadn't really seen much about yet. If you guys have any comments, questions, or you just want to say hello to me, then leave me a message down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. I absolutely love chatting with you guys in the comments and I always make sure to answer everyone. If by some chance you have left me a comment and I have not answered you yet, um, YouTube has really been kind of crappy lately and they haven't been letting me know about my new comments. So I'm having to go back in and physically look at each video and each comment to see if anything new has popped up. So if I haven't answered you yet, then please be patient with me because I will get back to you. I promise. So I hope that y'all enjoyed this and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye y'all.